I have the good fortune of working in an exceptional public school. It is a gleaming new building built high up on a hill with sweeping views. There's a wind turbine and an array of solar panels. Every new student who walks in through the door gets a brand new MacBook Air laptop. You can actually smell the promise of STEM in the air. Yet since 2012, not a single female student has gone on to a two or a four year program to study computer science. And the boys haven't done much better either, with only three students having gone forward to study computer science. This is, in a, this is a data set of nearly 1,000 students in a community where many incomes are dependent on STEM-related industries. And students come from families with parents fully aware of the national employment and compensation statistics associated with degree selection. For example, computer science and engineering majors are tied for the highest average starting salaries ahead of third place business majors by over 20%. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics reports an anticipated growth of 18% in computer science fields over the next decade, trailing only healthcare in that category. Post-millennials, or Generation Z, these are the students born after the year 2000, not only know what software is and what it can do, but they have a relationship with it. The smartphone, the app, and God help us, the selfie, have replaced the car keys as the ultimate status symbol. So what possibly can be the problem attracting students to pursue degrees in highly sought after fields where the promise of compensation and job placement is so high and you get to work in the entrepreneurial, constantly evolving and exciting workplace of companies with names like Facebook, Twitter, Google, and Apple? The problem is well-rooted in the systemic and systemic in the slow-moving gears of public education. In the United States, in nearly every school, if computer science is offered at all, it's relegated to ancillary status, taught only to a minuscule subset of students who have otherwise already identified their interest in the topic. Most students never choose to go on in computer science because they don't know what it is. Over the past 11 years, I've taught physics to mostly seniors who are in the throes of college selection. And many of them will tell me when I ask that they didn't study computer science because they simply had no idea what it was all about. Imagine if we accepted that answer to students that were interested in medicine or law or investment banking. The solution is broad-based computer science as core curriculum for all students, not just for select few at the 11th hour. The recent interest in the National Computer Science Education Week and the Hour of Code can only be the beginning to a deeper, more meaningful commitment to developing the 21st century knowledge and skills that our students will need. But there is a catch. Public schools are increasingly aware of the pressure to add computer science to their core STEM curriculum, but they are not well positioned to take action. Not only is there no consensus on where to begin, how to teach it, and what to teach, perhaps most importantly, there exists within schools no local expertise in computer programming. How can we expect schools to advance computer science education when they don't have the teachers who know it? Districts cannot simply go out and pluck dynamic new computer science teachers because they don't exist. Recent college graduates in computer science can often make two or three times the starting salaries of new teachers and are quickly swept up into the workforce. A little bit more on that in a minute. First, a dirty little insider secret. Curriculum is local. What I mean by that is what students learn and how they learn it is often decided upon by small groups of teachers in each individual school. The state likes to think they have a say in how things are done, but most often that's limited to a very rough outline called a curriculum framework that de defines what students will learn over a specific span of years. And that's it. There's no more input from the state. 
They don't have the resources to follow through with schools after that. So what I'm saying here is that teachers drive curriculum and not the captains of education that sit in Concord and Washington, D.C., as you might think. On that note, the federal government's first foray into a national curriculum framework is called the Common Core, and it's been met with fierce resistance and has a very uncertain future. The problem is that teachers that don't have coding and programming experience cannot be forward thinking about this and won't be introducing new computer science curriculum in our schools anytime soon. It's the proverbial chicken and the egg paradox. Schools should identify willing teachers and train them over about a year or so in basic computer science principles. Additional, more advanced topics will take additional time and commitment from school districts. Change will come more quickly when the public demands it. And this is where you come in. Don't assume that your school's curriculum is intractable when in fact it might already be teetering on change. Attend a principal's meeting or morning coffee hour and see how computer science may already be integrated into your school's computer science curriculum. Start asking. Better yet, attend a school board meeting and see if your school can take a more proactive, intentioned approach to giving teachers the opportunity to educate themselves in computer science so they can lead the way as advocates in developing computer science for children in our school districts at an even younger age. Change has to come. The time has come for a meaningful pivot in public school attitudes towards computer science education. Thank you.